Hey guys, how's it going? So this morning I'm working on a few more spring containers. Nothing uh, groundbreaking in terms of design or really plant choice. Although I am, I think, going to incorporate some uh, veggies, some edibles in with one of my containers. And I thought you guys might just enjoy seeing some spring color. It is fresh out here. I thought it was supposed to be a lot warmer this morning. It's supposed to still get close to 60, but it does not feel like it. Um, and the wind is blowing. But if I waited for a non-windy day to plant containers, I'd be waiting a long time. So I think I'm just going to try to tackle these. I'm going to start with the Galloway urn right here and then um, I want to do the back pots by our sun porch and then the pots by our vegetable garden. And I don't plant every single one of our containers up for spring. We have a lot of containers and that would just take, it would take a tremendous effort um, and a lot of supplies to plant up every single one of our containers for every season. So in the spring I just, um, since there's not a ton of plant variety available, um, I typically just plant up a few containers that are like very visible that we walk by or that we see from windows. So like our Galloway urn here, this is an area we put in last year and I love it. It looks so different in season. Maybe we can toss a picture up on the screen. I still have a lot of development to do in this spot. Like in this flower bed, I don't have much. I have a hedge of Limetta hydrangeas, but they are just not doing well. Like they just keep one at a time perishing. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if they don't like to be underneath this giant juniper. I think the juniper sucks the moisture from pretty much everything. So I need to up the amount of irrigation. We're doing particularly right around the bottom of the tree. We've got hostas there that I'm not even sure all of those survived. We'll have to see as it warms up a bit. But um, we do see this urn from a few of our windows, so I thought it'd be fun to add some color. And here are a few of my supplies. I actually gathered all this stuff up yesterday morning and I started in on this project and decided to stop because of the wind. But you know what, I'm just gonna do it today even though it's still a little bit breezy. But this is going to be the centerpiece of this urn. Look at this hellebore. Look at how gorgeous. It's called Pippa's Purple, I think. Yep. Frost Kiss Pippa's Purple. And one of my favorite things, I mean, other than the fact that the blooms are a beautiful color, the leaves are really interesting. And some of them even have like right here, see the pink veining? Let's see if I can get it to focus. Yeah, see that? Isn't that so pretty? And I can use all of these out in the landscape after I'm done with them. And almost more exciting, we've got this fern that when it's putting out its new growth here, look at the color. Like the color of it, it's called a something optiforum eared lady, fern, anyway. But the um, color of the stems and the color of the new growth mirrors the color of the hellebore blooms. Isn't that so pretty? And then to play off of that dark kind of color, I've got some beets. So these are bull's blood beets. And I'm gonna use these obviously for just foliage growth. My camera is not focusing on it. <laughs> having some focus issues today, um, but won't that be beautiful? So the contrast between, you know, the, the color and the texture of the leaves of the hellebore and the fern, I think it's gonna be beautiful. And I'll probably, I won't separate these clearly. I'll just pop each one of the cell packs out and use it all together. And then in the end, since I won't give them a ton of room to form actual beets to eat, the chickens will be able to eat whatever I'm able to take out of the pot. And then for a little bit of color around the base, they look kind of red in the camera, but they're like a burgundy pink. It's called um, Rose. And they look really pretty with the other stuff. So anyway, that's what we're starting with today. I have my potting soil and I'm going to toss some flower tone into the soil and get this one done. I might go grab some branches, depending on how I, I don't know, how it looks in the end. I might like twist some branches around, give it some upward movement if it needs it. So here we go.
Okay, I love how this turned out. Lighting's a little weird. Hold on, let me see if I can get better, better lighting. There we go. Look at all of that texture and color. It's so pretty. Oh, I ended up using three hellebores in the center. This one's got a little bit of a wild, wild hair going on. And then six ferns. So I used three that I showed you already that has kind of that pinkish new growth which I have the tags again, so this is that one. And then I had three four inch size of the Robust, which is this green one right here. And I found that I did need all six of them because the diameter, I mean, like the urn is squatty kind of, but the diameter is wide enough to where it takes a number of plants to fill it up if you want it to be full from the beginning. And then you can see the beet leaves. Aren't those absolutely gorgeous? I think it's really fun to put something in a little bit unexpected like that. I also like to do Swiss chard. That's a beautiful edible to put in containers. And then the rose pansies, which just add a little bit of color, but I think it's just a fun spring look. Now I did put branches in there and I thought it just added a little too much detail and it kind of distracted from everything going on already. So I took them out. I think that's gonna be a fun one to watch fill in because it's already full, but as these pansies bulk up and the beets bulk up, it'll start filling in kind of this um, like middle section between the hellebores and where the plants are now. Uh, because right now it looks a little bit like airy right in here, which is not a bad thing, um, but it always is fun after about, I don't know, just a couple of weeks really of heat, which we're supposed to get. Um, I think that this will be really filled in and gorgeous, but it already has drip run to it. Today I'll water it in by hand and probably for the next week or two, and then our water will be on and it will be automatically watered and I won't have to worry about it. So the next pots I want to plant up are the ones on our back shade porch. So this is what we've got going for these pots. They'll be fairly simple, but um, I did make the investment with these boxwood spirals. It is not very often that I can find boxwood topiary in a small enough container to put in something like this. Usually when I find a topiary, they're in giant containers and then I can't use them in small pots. So I was so excited when I saw these in at the garden center. These are a variety called Green Mountain right here. And they've got just a nice deep green leaf and they're perfect scale, I think, for back here. And then I tend to like to use light yellow back here. I did a ranunculus, yellow ranunculus and yellow viola container a couple years ago and I enjoyed it so much that I wanted to repeat because last year I did blue and white and I liked that too, but this is just so cheerful. Okay, so let's get these planted. bud. Oh, try again. Now, if that isn't a picture of spring, bubbles and bright yellow flowers, I don't know what is. Good and job. Day. Yeah, blustery day. That's kind of all year for us though. Yeah. Okay, so boxwood spirals and then the really sunny, beautiful pansies, which I probably could have used a few more, but they will grow. I mean, these were on the small side anyway. They were barely filling their cans. And it is really hard to blow off a surface when it's windy outside. Oh yeah. So I think I'm gonna have to do the bulk of my cleanup here. I'll just rinse all the stairs and the pots off with a hose when I uh, string that out to water these. Yeah, I really like that. Especially once those pansies start to fill in. So pretty. Also, you guys, our house is being painted this spring. <laughs> I can't wait for that, which means we'll paint the stairs again and we'll paint all of the edges and all of that. It's going to be so nice to have it fresh. Okay, the last set of containers, which will be much like these urns, are the two containers right in front of our vegetable garden. So let's head that direction. Okay, so you can see the pots right over there. I already kind of popped the evergreens in there. They're not planted yet. You coming, bud? You got your bubbles? I got my bubbles. 
Good deal. I just love with the gear. Yeah. Up aboard. There we go. All aboard. There we go. Oh, the sun feels glorious, buddy. It's so warm. We are going to plant up these two containers up front here. So, oh yeah, the bubble on the seat. So like I said, these will be much like the containers we just did. I've got some of the leftover blue and lavender pansies from our barn container project. And then these are sprinter boxwoods. These are the nicest looking, looking sprinters I have ever seen, like in nursery containers. And they're in kind of large-ish containers. You can see I just popped them down in there. So I usually do a grass or something in these containers and then I miss having something in them throughout the winter so much. So I decided to put some evergreens in these as well so that I can have something beautiful to look at next winter. And I'll just fill in with annuals for spring, summer, and fall. And I've got, you know, um, boxwoods here in the interior of the vegetable garden. So I'm kind of just mirroring that look. And I've also got spherical ones that kind of cap each end. So it's kind of like a, I don't know, looks like a full on plan, which is rare around here. those turned out really sweet. I really like the color of those pansies. And the fresh growth on the uh, boxwoods is kind of nice too. I mean I do plan on tightening up the spheres because I do like them to be um, kind of topiary-esque when they're in containers but it's still a little bit too cold out so I don't really want to risk opening opening them up to any kind of cold damage. So anyway, they're just gonna stay like this. We'll let the pansies grow and fill in. Again, those will be full of color. And they usually, for me, like pansies will get like this big. Like they'll come way out and they'll be completely full of color. So that will be exciting. But just the simplicity of spring containers is always a little bit refreshing as well. And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing those spring containers come together. I don't know that I'm going to be planting up a ton more containers for spring. I mean, I've got a lot of containers still sitting in front of the greenhouse full of bulbs waiting to come up. They're starting to peek through the soil surface. We're starting to get enough heat for them to start to grow and that should be very exciting and beautiful. Um, but it's fun to have some containers full of things, especially where you see, you know, the containers you see all the time, you kind of want them to look good all the time. And that's why I'm especially excited about the evergreens that I added into containers today, because I mean, they're much more of an investment up front but you get so much more out of them. I mean, they're gonna look gorgeous and bring structure all year, not just spring, summer, and fall. We'll have them there for the winter time. We can put Christmas lights on them. And I do love a good boxwood and a good topiary. So it's always a fun day when we add more of those. So we'll leave a list of plants down in the description box below if you wanna check any of those out. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.